on track to keep moving with the last 15 minute technique talk. Um, this is with Julie. Um, she's going to talk to us about an instructor's card trick. I'm sure David's excited about that, this one because he's kind of a magic kind of guy. So Julie, we'll let you take it away. All right. So just uh, shout at me if you can't see my screen. Um, so this I'm calling the a magic instructor's card trick because I've always been sort of a magician wannabe. Um, and I found that um, no matter how many tricks I tried to learn, I really couldn't do sleight of hand. And so this is a card trick that you can do with no, you don't have to have any skill set. Um, really, it's, it's really pretty foolproof. Um, so I use it to either introduce or review or practice important course terms, ideas, elements, and I'll give you a, a couple of example here, examples. So um, I am from, excuse me, I'll introduce myself here real quick. I'm from the University of Central Missouri. Um, I live in Kansas City and um, I teach Spanish. So the idea here is to mix course content with a magic trick. And as I mentioned, you just are going to use a regular, and I don't know if everybody, I'm gonna to try to hold cards up to the, to the camera. Normally I do this live, so I don't know how well it goes on Zoom, but maybe, maybe it'll be okay. Um, but I wanna give you an idea of how you could do it live. Um, you're just gonna use a regular deck of cards. So there, and there's no sleight of hand needed at all. And um, the idea is to kind of, well, for, I'll talk a little bit about how you can connect the content of your course to the trick. And one of the things that you're gonna do is you are gonna get a deck of cards that you're basically gonna ruin because you're gonna write on the back of every card with like a Sharpie or a marker. And I'll do a trick demo um, just to show you how it goes. And then I'll explain how you do it. So um, I was thinking about David's um, activity earlier about doing things that are pointless. And when I first started trying to incorporate a magic trick into class here and there, like I do it at the beginning of class, um, I could never get it really tied to the content. So I always felt a little bit like pointless. Um, there are a lot of those kinds of tricks. It's easy to find something like that or mentalism. And I couldn't figure out, well, how, how could I, because sometimes the students would look at me like, why did you just do that? Or what was the point of that? It has nothing to do with class. Um, so I tried to find some, a way to connect it to class. And so and I mentioned earlier the idea of key elements, terms, concepts, ideas, or items for the course. So before I explain the sort of the trick part of it, the idea is to increase exposure to whatever the elements are that you think are important in your course. And you don't have to have 52, although if you have 52, you know, the number of decks or the number of cards in a deck, that would be great. Um, but for example, um, in my Spanish civilization course, I'll give you, I'll show you a real one and then I'll do sort of a pretend one. Um, I have this just regular deck of cards and on the back, before we had a test, I had some elements that were really important. Like, for example, people, name of a, a person. I don't know, again, if how well this is coming over on the camera. Uh, names of literary works, um, another literary work. And so just one of the things that I did was just put all of these items on the back of cards. And I just sort of, without warning, I pull the cards out. And I just start talking about them and I shuffle them just to show the students that there's, there's no setup or anything like that. Um, and then I use it as an excuse to talk about whatever the course content is. And so with vocabulary, for example, in languages, there's some, there's in uh, learning another language, there's some um, research that shows that people need to have like 20 exposures to a particular vocabulary word before they can learn it. And so, this is sort of an activity just to increase the amount of contact students have with a particular term. And I think this would work in any discipline. So if you're in biology, it could be uh, terms that are important for biology, any, any concepts or ideas. If you don't have 52, you can repeat them. So if you have you know, 20 or 30, you can write some of them several times on the back. But the idea is to write these important concepts on the back. Then I start with, and it can, this, can be, this could be two minutes, this could be five minutes, this could be 15 minutes but I initiate this discussion with the students about the items. So sometimes I pull two of them up, show them the back and I say, okay, which of these is the one that has to do with X, Y, or Z? Or I say, what do you guys think is the most important this or that? And I'll find the card and show it. And so I just sort of use it as, as an excuse to kind of review, talk, work on those concepts again. 
So for um, so I'll give you a little bit of a demonstration instead of, instead of instead of using my class stuff because it's not quite as interesting. I just decided to take it out of the the academic realm a little bit. And so on the back, that's the red deck here. On the back of this blue deck, I have written the names of sitcoms, the American sitcoms. And so I don't know if you guys can see them, but I've got here like Roseanne. And if you're as old as I am, you might remember the Munsters and uh, the Golden Girls and Everybody Hates Chris, more recent. I Dream of Jeannie, one from the 60s. And so I have all of these sitcoms and I tried to do a little bit of research on ones that were considered groundbreaking, most popular, won the most Emmys. And so I came up with a bunch of them. Here's Happy Days, Frasier. You might think of your own favorite, New Girl, WKRP in Cincinnati. I Love Lucy, um, Modern Family. So this would be a non-academic example. So what I'd like to do is, and I can't, let's see, I, can, I guess I can see the chat. I would like for um, someone, let's see, whose uh, birthday is maybe within the next week. So today's October 15th. So between now and October 22nd, if you have a birthday in the next week, if you could put your name in the chat. I don't know if I can, let's see if I can see the chat here. Anybody have a birthday? Oh, I'm not gonna ask you to do anything difficult. I'm only just gonna ask you to put the card. So if anybody has a birthday, this is what I usually do in class. It's just ask who has a birthday. Oh, okay, Laura, awesome, October 22nd. So hang on just a second, Laura, I'm gonna ask you for a card. But anyway, what I would do is I'm gonna talk talking about these sitcoms. Um, everybody tells me to watch The Good Place. I haven't watched it yet. They say it's awesome. It's really good if you're interested in philosophical topics. I need to watch that. Mary Tyler Moore, that was revolutionary uh, for a lot of reasons. Um, I remember Malcolm in the Middle was funny. So, but, but at, in doing my research, I found that the most groundbreaking sitcom in, in certain respects was I Love Lucy because, and I looked this up, um, I guess it was one of the, it was the first TV series to be broadcast as reruns. And so it was then, then people and generations afterwards had the opportunity to see it. Um, it was revolutionary in the way that it portrayed women and funny women and pregnancy on TV and um, marriage. And so it was, it was revolutionary in all of those ways. So once I talk about whatever the concepts are, I try to get to a particular one of the cards that, that, that's here, okay? So I think of one of them. And I, I either, it could either be something that we talked about in class and I lead the students to say, okay, what was the right answer to this? It's gonna be one of the cards or what was the most important thing? Or sometimes I'll just tell them, this is what I think is the most important concept. So I'm telling you guys, yes, female friendship, that was another one. I'm telling you guys that I Love Lucy was, of all the, all the ones that I have here, was gonna be considered the most revolutionary. So um, let's see. Let's see, who was it, Laura? Who was the person with the birthday? Was it Laura? I lost the name again. Oh, yes, Laura. Okay, so Laura, can you just type in the chat any card in the deck? So I've got just a random set of cards here. So can you type just any one and I'll, and I'll find it. Queen of Hearts, perfect. Okay, so normally I show the students what I'm doing. I can't exactly show it very easily, but I'll just show you that I'm looking for Queen of Hearts. Okay, so I have found the Queen of Hearts right here. I don't know if everybody can see it. Is this, hopefully, I don't know how far back. I don't have no idea how this is looking. So anyway, so I say, okay, the, the Queen of Hearts is what um, uh, Laura picked. And it just so happens that Laura has these wonderful predictive powers because on the back of the card that Laura picked is I Love Lucy. And what? Part, yeah, so that's amazing. You, that was really, really good that you did that, Laura. I'm very impressed. So that's the trick, okay? So at the end, at the end of all of that, um, there's just a little trick. So it doesn't, um, the trick itself maybe doesn't have a huge educational purpose, but it definitely gets the students paying attention. Um, you can sometimes tell them all right, there's gonna be um, a trick at the end of this or pay attention or somebody in this class has predictive powers. And so that's, that's how I do it. So yes, definitely tell you how I would do it. So um, here we go, here's how you do it. So of course, as I mentioned, you write items in the back of the, the cards and this is just anything that you think is relevant to your particular course that you think um, it would be a good opportunity to, it could actually be to introduce something too. So if you were, if you were introducing a concept, you could, you could start with that. 
Um, I kind of use it as a review. And then what, what you're going to do is you're going to select one of the items to be forced. Obviously, I was trying to force I Love Lucy. Okay, and so you're going to note the card that's on the other side. So you're just going to pick, it can be any of the cards, but you pick whatever you think is the most important card, or maybe it's going to be the answer to the question. What you're going to do is you're going to put double stick tape on the face of that card and place it on the bottom of the deck. And then, whoops, sorry about that. And then, as, as I said, you use that as an opportunity to talk about the concepts, terms, you review, explain, ask questions about them. Um, keep showing the students. You can shuffle the cards. You can show them that there's a it's a regular deck because it is a regular deck. Show them the faces. And then, um, let's see here. You want to eventually somehow steer the discussion to the concept or term that you have pre-selected. So it could be the right answer to a question. Like it could be a math question and it could be the one that's gonna be the right answer. And you could even get the students to say it like, oh, the answer to that is such and such. That's an even better way than, than me having to tell them what the most important card is. Um, but it could be the most popular, most important, but you wanna emphasize that card. And then as I did, as I uh, did with um, Laura, choose someone from the class, the person's birthday, whose birthday is next. And then that person names any card in the deck. And so you'll turn the cards face up. And, you know, as I did, you just look for the card that they pick because it will be in the deck. And, uh, and then when you find it, just hold it up and just don't let them see what's written on the back of it because what's written on the back is not the card that you want to force. And um, of course you can ask the person, are you sure? Do you want to change it? It doesn't matter, they could change it. And then when you put that selected card on the bottom of the deck, let's see here, let me find, I've lost my, I lost my sticky card here. Here we go. When you place it on the bottom of the deck, like the queen of hearts here, it will just stick to that card. And so when you, when you turn it around, it'll have the concept of the term that you decided is your, your focus. And then you can, let's see here. Move it. Here's, here's where it sticks. And it's really not very hard to pull it apart. If I want to, I can pull it apart. And it was really the seven of clubs. And then um, you can, um, again, remind the students that there was that this was the right answer. I love Lucy or whatever it was. And when you show the card, as I just did, turn it around. It looks like the, the, the word that you've been talking about or the term was the one that was, was picked. And then you congratulate the students on his or her predictive powers. So um, that's one way to, to sort of tie, you know, something with magic to some sort of course content. And pretty much, I think it would, it would work and I think it would work in almost any discipline just because almost every discipline has some sort of list or set of terms or ideas or concepts. So that, that is it. I don't have a name for the trick. <laughs> Awesome. Thank you so much. Are there questions for Julie? Let's see in the chat. Um, yes, I do some other, other tricks in class. There, there's one called the dictionary trick, um, um, which is where you can, um, I can I can share this with somebody if they want to email me. Uh, I'll put my email up here. It's a little a little complicated to explain here. Um, but the dictionary trick is basically where you impress students by they they pick a sort of a number on a page in a dictionary and then a certain number of words down and you automate you already know that word. So it sort of appears as if you if they could identify a page in the dictionary and a word on it and you would know exactly what that word was. Um, so. That one, that one takes a little bit of preparation, but um, things like that, although even that, um, I just never felt like it was exactly tied to the class. So um, like I said, this is one where, where you can kind of bring in the course materials. Um, I do think, and I have not actually, what for, surprisingly, I have not been teaching on Zoom like everybody else. I've been teaching face-to-face -face pretty much during the whole pandemic, just except for the very beginning. And um, for my daughter's third birthday, I had a magician come mainly because she was too young to appreciate it, but um, all the adults um, loved it. And so during the pandemic, she had another birthday and I decided, she's older now, and I decided to, to hire that same magician and he has a whole show on Zoom. And so I was very inspired and amazed. And I don't think he does a whole lot of sleight of hand. He does a lot of mentalism, um, but he does it on Zoom. So I think, I think there's a lot of possibilities for Zoom. Um, but um, I, have, I haven't really done that much with, with virtual now. 